all right what's good everybody it's your boy philly flexer back in the building again today and today um it, it, it's one of my favorite series and whatnot man it's giggles um anime of the year what was well, seasons of anime or whatnot and today or whatnot we got the fall anime of 2023 and you know your boy had been waiting for this video so uh i mean it, it i can't even say like without further ado or whatnot it's just more or less like let's just go ahead and hop into this joint because i'm just ready to get into it see what he got going on see what he's gonna talk about and whatnot because i have been watching some of everything like it's probably like like three or four that i haven't been watching and, and i see there's a couple that i've been watching that i like that a couple other people don't like or whatnot like i think under ninja is really good i think paradox live is, is pretty good or whatnot um uh, um i mean i can't even think of off, off the top of my head like um I'm a big fan of Rise of the Shield Hero, so season three right now is actually, you know what I'm saying, popping to me, Goblin Slayer is popping to me, um, I mean, you know, it's just a lot of them and whatnot, but uh, anyways, let's go ahead and get into it, it also, before I even say that or whatnot, um, as you just saw before I even clicked the screen over or whatnot, uh, Rent a Girlfriend goes hard to me or whatnot, and also Girlfriend Girlfriend, both of them go hard to me or whatnot, so I've been, uh, been vibing with the new season of Girlfriend Girlfriend or whatnot, and I just feel like, um, just open open your horizons. If you're not into those type of anime, go ahead and check them out or whatnot. Because a lot of them, they, uh, they're, they're funny, goofy, romantic stuff or whatnot. So if you like a little bit of rom-com, go ahead and check those out or whatnot. But anyways, let's go ahead and check this out. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Fall Anime 20, 2023. In a nutshell, man. Let's go ahead and get into this. What am I doing with my life? Every season, I no, no, hold on, hold on, before you even start. I thought that same thing. Hold on, let's just rewind it real quick. That was my same expression when I saw that. And, but Under Ninja is so is so weird and so goofy and so funny, but it got the action and the boxing in it and some storytelling in it. It's it's hey so yeah. Let's just go ahead and let my man talk. Oh, shout, shout out to Giggle for this one. What am I doing with my life? Every season, I seem to think to myself, man, there is just way too much anime coming out right now, and every new season anime is like, Hey guys, did you say you wanted even more? The fall anime season really dropped over 60 new shows to choose from, 23 new sequels, 14 isekai of fantasy, a bajillion edgy shows, two racing anime, two yeah. she just like me for yeah. real anime. Yeah, Overtake, MF Ghost. Um, I'm watching, um, uh, um, In Love With, well, no. No, no, not in love with the villainous. Uh, um, I, I haven't started that one yet. It's uh, what's it called? It's naughtiness. T teaching teaching a girl about naughtiness or something like that. I wouldn't. I've been watching that one. Um, Starlight Telepath. Uh, 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 um, man, I've been watching so many things. It would not, man. It's it's been a fun fall so far. Romance, slice of life, action with so many shows, there's only one thing I know Dead I Dead Mouth do. Death Player wouldn't I've been telling people about that one though. Rock and roll! Freeze! Hands up! What the hell is this? Is it a bomb? Guess I'm a grenade. Nobody else can do this but Ninja. Look what's on the corner of the desk. Ninja? Wanted to see them for real. You wanna die? I don't wanna die. Thank God and your mommy you didn't see them. Ah! From the insane mangaka of I'm Hero comes an anime about Ninja. ninja. Did you know ninja, ninja still exists? Of course you don't. That's why they're Ninja. ninja. And like ninja. ninja, this anime never lets you know its next move. Take this nope. guy. Just a normal foreigner, right? What's nope. he doing? That's right. He's come to Japan to become Ninja. ninja. Now I know what you're thinking. Average weeb in Where's Narita Airport. But he's serious. He finds no, a random sign on the street that says, If you piss here, I'll cut your rod off. Clearly, this was left by Ninja. ninja. A trial. This must mean if you 
cuts off three dicks, you become ninja. ninja. That's the only possibility. He approaches a random dude urinating on the streets with a pair of scissors. Easy target. Uh-oh, the dick he thought he was cutting was actually Odin. It was a bait. He's outed himself as ninja. ninja. JK, bitches, he's ninja, ninja too. With ninja, ninja moves, he can do ninja things. Who is this guy? He's first class ninja. ninja. The show is like a fever dream set in a Yakuza side mission. This is the lore accurate ninjas ninja. we need. Yeah, all right, they don't have shurikens or orange jumpsuits or summoning ninjutsu, but can your favorite ninjas ninja. do this? Yes. I feel like in 2023, yeah, exactly. some of the biggest and best <laughs> Exactly, that's why I say that show is so funny, but so serious at the same time. I love a good mixture of that. So I've ended up being sequels to already existing anime, and this season doesn't seem like it's an exception. Our favorite anime family is here again for yep. round two. Dr. Back. Stone is apparently going through one of his going better hard. arcs right now. Goblin going Slayer hard. is back with some... Goblin slang. Tokyo yep. Avengers is continuing yep. along Doing with damn thing. Seven Deadly Sins Magnus as a Bride. sequel now? What? Oh, I, I, I haven't started watching this yet, but they said that the animation of this is so is so so much better or whatnot that like just give give back a chance or whatnot. So I will be starting this right here or whatnot. What? And it's not called Eight Lethal Wrongdoings? You know, I've clowned on Seven Deadly Sins fans enough now, so I'm just not going to do it. I'll let them have this. I'm not going to say anything. So uh, let's talk about something else. Um, Look, I've just finished playing Final Fantasy 16 recently. All okay. right, Clive. Mid. When did you get back? All right, here's something I'll gladly clown on. Shield Hero was a dumb but fun little isekai that did everything it needed to do in the first season. So I wondered where the story could go after that. So season two clearly heard me and went, all right. Bet, and was horrendously disappointing. Look, I might be the isekai guy, but even I've got to be picky with what I choose to keep up with. I'm a busy man, mate. So season three is going to have to do something really special to get me interested to get doing a tournament arc. Eminence and shadow. That's what I said. And they started off with it, with it, with it. It started off like that with a little tournament arc or whatnot, but he's like, re, like got his own little village he's building up now or whatnot. He's recruiting all these different slaves and stuff. He's building up kids. He's building up, you know what I'm saying, a whole... Yeah, I mean, well, Goblin Slayer's kind of doing the same thing, too, but he's kind of got, like, his own little village thing going on, Oscar here or whatnot, but... Uh, Rise of the Shield Hero, you know what I'm saying, they... they the Shield Hero is... is um, I gotta say, it seems like every episode has been action-packed so far. It's been telling a good story and all that right there. And I, I don't know. Season 2, some people didn't like it as much or whatnot, but... I mean, hey, it is what it is to each his own. I've been liking uh, Shield Hero so far. I, I ain't gonna hold you on that. I know season two, <laughs> now we're talking, which makes this convenient because they are actually the sponsor of today's video in collaboration with High Dive. Yes, I'm not joking, which makes this the mm. easiest sponsor segment I've ever had because I get to say what I had written down about the show anyway and pass it off as an ad. In case you missed my previous video, Eminence and Shadow is some of the most fun I've ever had in the isekai genre. Okay, On I paper, a show like this yet. should absolutely not should've... work. It's... I actually need to get High Dive. It's edgy. It's been, cliche. I mean, it's it's like everything a lot of you think you roll your eyes at, but it fully embraces everything and does not give one care in the world what you think. It serves you cheesy one-liner after cheesy one-liner. Every dumb power fantasy you've ever had on a silver platter, and you gobble it up like you're a 14-year-old kid who's just discovered anime. This is what mm. happens when a show is so unapologetic about itself. It knuckles down on being so edgy, it loops around and becomes cool again. If you have a single isekai-loving bone in your body, this is what you should be watching. So, okay. weebs... Here's the deal. Right now, you can watch both seasons of Eminence and Shadow legally on High Dive, where they are releasing the dub at exactly the same time as the sub. So okay. you can sign up for a free trial for High Dive by clicking that link in the description where you can watch Eminence and Shadow and show my boy Sid some support, along with a plethora of other anime available there, like Oshinoko and Made in Abyss. Thank you very much to Eminence and Shadow Season 2 and High Dive for sponsoring me today. Ad segment over. All right, guys. Okay. We got to get hey, serious. you sold me a word now, because I've been thinking about getting High Dive, so now I get a free trial with it too? <laughs> Bet for a bit because we have a new esports anime about a recovering gamer mm. a gamer who's gone without gaming ever since his dad went for cigarettes and never came home because he's dead at least that's what his mum told him how does he still count as a gamer not once in all his years without gaming did he ever give up his gamer spirit <laughs> exactly a true yeah. gamer who hasn't seen real grass in over four years who has Damn. to take care of a sickly little sister who's been diagnosed with Ligma since the age of two. 
リグマ何リグマボールス<笑> But despite all these setbacks, he did what most oppressed gamers couldn't do. When his teammates needed a real gamer in the face of opportunity, he stood up and took it, showing us that even the most broken of gamers could become whole again, that any gamer could achieve their dreams. So, in the face of adversity, with the support of his friends, with the crowd cheering him on, he sat down, turned on his PC, And uninstalled Genshin Impact. Okay, time Ooh, for wow. a real gaming anime. Remember yes, that feeling when you saw yes, that first? Yes, yes, Shangri La Frontier would not. That holder, like people been saying, would not let me solo her. The anime, that's what this joint is. It is fire. Episode of SAO before you knew the show it would turn into and the market wasn't saturated with the same isekai esque VR gaming anime? Well, Shangri La Frontier somehow gave me that same excitement without even having any life threatening stakes, but just presenting a game that seems genuinely fun to play. We have a gamer who specializes in completing the most poorly designed, broken ass games only to completely dominate at a godlike game. My boy really discovered Elden Ring after playing Gollum the video game. And、There、you know you he's、go. a real ass sweaty gamer because he's one of those motherfuckers who plays with a completely naked build. While being a dirty crit stacker. This is the show to watch if you actually want a gaming anime, because it seems like it was made by people who are truly passionate about video games. Wait, did he just skip a cutscene? Oh no. Ah, prologue, ka. Skip, skip. Yes! Wait, is this a guy reincarnated as a pig who's been taken yeah, in by、I'm、an anime girl? I'm not watching this one. I'm not watching this no. one. I can't. Somebody better tell me something good about、again. this before、no. I even try it. The dogs want it up for you. You've come for our pigs now, anime? What's next? Cats, ducks, bears. Crispy bacon didn't die for this. What did we ever do to deserve this? Oh God! Why do we live in a world where dogs and pigs get more bitches than we do? Ah, <sighs> please tell me there's something this season that can cleanse my soul. Hold on, before he even says that, I'm gonna go ahead and say this right here. He said, "How is it there's a world where dogs and pigs get more bitches than we do?" I'm sorry, sir, but dogs and pigs in real life get more bitches than us good guys, and that's why women be talking about men ain't shit. It ain't nothing but dogs and pigs and blah blah from this here. But that's what they go for. <laughs> Anime speaking the truth. Now I, did, I I just watched the latest episode of this before I even start recording. Wow, love this show. I didn't even think this show was gonna go that hard. This show is fucking fire. I already said fire about like five shows already, but there like fall and May there has been some some bangers dropping so far. Everybody want to talk about JJK? Yeah, JJK been good or whatnot, but a lot of that stuff there has been spoiled by all these manga readers who is like, oh well, wait till this happen, well, wait till this happen or whatnot. A lot of these shows they ain't read the manga or whatnot, so we ain't getting spoiled on this on Twitter and all that right there or whatnot. So shout out to all these animes that's been low key hiding in the cut and they getting animated now and then it, 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 yeah. There's normally at least one new show in a season that is an instant must-watch after one episode, and I'm glad to say that this time it's Free Ren Beyond Journey's End. Free Ren is not your typical anime fantasy story. There's no demon lord, no grand world-saving adventure, no earth-shattering stakes are on the line. Yet it carries an emotional weight few shows are ever able to achieve. In episode one, this is the story of an elf girl burdened with an abundance of time, a being who, in our eyes, is functionally immortal. In the blink of an eye, decades are gone, companions age, friends die, and all she's left with is the regret for the wasted time she could have spent with them. It's a story about appreciating the little things in life you might have missed, and I cannot begin to tell you how much they are nailing this adaptation. The scenery is drop dead gorgeous. The、yep. serene atmosphere lulls you in, and Evan Cole's Lord of the Ring as soundtrack wells up these emotions you might. Have forgotten you had for an experience that warms the soul. But what I love the most is feeling what the passage of time is like for a being like Free Ren. Seasons、yeah. change in an instant. Months can pass scene to scene without you even knowing. She、yep. buys some item at a shop, goes on a casual stroll, gets lost. A few seconds go by. She comes back. The shopkeeper's an old man now. There are so many little things you can miss if you're not paying attention. But、yep. if you're willing to sit down, turn off that TikTok brain for a second, and give yourself some time to really get absorbed in a slower-paced show, I guess. Guarantee this is like, going to be one of the most beautiful tales you see all year. Before he continues on, I wouldn't. I mean, just imagine a world where, like, it's not. Like, she's not immortal. She just lives by Elven rules, 
And you know how they always say with elves or whatnot, the day can live for thousands and thousands of years or whatnot. So here she goes. She can have as many friends as she wants, family, all this right here or whatnot. Well, not family, or whatnot, but all these friends. And they live normal human lives. You know, we're born. We live to our 70s, 80s, 90s. If you're lucky, your hundreds or whatnot. And then you pass away. And she just keep going through this cycle with so many different people or whatnot. And now they're telling the story. It's like, like they told they, they told the story or whatnot of the last group that she was with. And like that's how we begun the anime with the, the last group she was with. They're all dying off. And it's like, hey, can you take care of this person for me? Can you watch out for this person for me or whatnot? I know you're going to live a lot longer or whatnot. Yeah, you're going to outlive the people I'm going to tell you to go watch out for or whatnot. But just do that for me or whatnot. And now she's finally starting to understand all this. Uh, um, just, just understanding time. Just understanding that time isn't the same for everybody. Yeah, for you, you know what I'm saying? Like, she, she nonchalantly be like, oh, yeah, that was like 10 years ago or whatnot. 10 years to her is like 10 days to us. So it's it's so it's it's sad it's sad but it's like it makes you as a human being realize stop wasting your days man stop wasting your days but that isn't the only thing with potential this season. Undead Unluck already has some of the most inventive use of anime powers Everybody I've seen. We got a guy with Wolverine-esque regenerative powers turning his yet. entire body into a weapon. Firing off his own body parts, using his regen to gain momentum mid-air. It might not be the most complicated powers, but you can get a sense the author has put a lot of thought into how the simplest abilities would actually affect a person's fighting style if they refined all their mechanics to the absolute peak, and I love that feeling. Shonen Jump have been on fire recently with pretty much all of their anime releases. This might not cause as big of a splash as some of their other hits, but it's definitely one of the dark horses this season, along no, with I, this one. Aside from knowing it was gonna- No, I heard he was, um, it was the first time somebody who was like, who could like regenerate is actually using his powers more than just, oh, I can just take a lot of hits. It's like, like he said, like he's using his regen powers to like float through the air or like use certain moves, like he'll rip off his own arm or whatnot and like use it as a weapon or whatnot because he knows he's finna regenerate it. And like, you wasn't seeing niggas do that shit. Gonna be one of the most gorgeous looking anime in 4 and manga readers were very, very excited. I didn't know what to expect out of Apothecary Diaries. So I'm glad mm. to say that okay. after the premiere, I realized, oh, this is just House MD in Imperial China. We got okay. Gremlin Walter White cooking up different drugs for the Royal Palace mixed in with a bit of political intrigue. This one definitely piqued my interest. I'm just waiting for my hook to get me fully invested. I'm gonna be real though. My stupid ass didn't even know what an apothecary was before watching this show. I know that's okay. a me thing, but how about a name that no, even my dumb ass can that's understand? Why, that's why I didn't if we want a brand safe name, we can just call it the Pharmacist Journals. But personally, there's one I think that's more thematically accurate. Memoirs of a Crack Dealer. Mm. Mm. Into the oven, 170, two, two and a half hours, and forget about it. There's a new firefighter oh, yeah. anime saving a Tokyo that's I've been off watching by this flames after someone called Jujutsu Kaisen mid. It's good to see a five. It's 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 a show that it just gives me something completely different. Like I wake up on Saturdays, I watch it. It's a whole different show. Oh, Sundays. Monday, one or the other. I think it's Saturday or Sunday. I can't remember which day it comes out. But it's just a, it's a, just a firefighter show or whatnot. It's like the most normal human thing or whatnot. But it's the storytelling they've been telling is pretty good. I won't say the spoilers. One of the dudes do some shit or whatnot. And I was like, oh, damn, he actually did that or whatnot. And, and but like, I would, I got to go ask a firefighter. Like, have you ever done this before? Like, is that is that true to life? Have you done that? <laughs> Fights around me where they actually fight fire like actual firefighters, as yeah. opposed to the usual anime shit where they fight fires by, you know, just being the shit out of it. Okay, what's next? Bull, Bull Buster by Studio. You sick bastards. This is probably the most grounded mecha anime I've ever seen. You have a small company scraping by to operate their mechs that look like they should be doing work in a construction site, tasked with exterminating giant beasts in a world where kaiju have cost the world hundreds of lives. So, what's the biggest threat facing all of humanity? Paperwork. Mm. And right there, some Japanese bureaucrat just busted a studio nut. Ron Kamenahashi's mm. Forbidden Deductions. I've a detective who detective so hard, he's been banned from detectiving ever again because, ooh, he's so quirky. He's not like no. other detectives. Why? Every time he solves a case, he tells the culprit to kill Look themselves. The there you go. Yeah, this is just Sherlock meets slow tier God. Man. Now time for... Is this an isekai? Or is it 
just fantasy. We got a redo of Redo of Healer where every character isn't clinically insane. There's an actual villainous anime about definitely not Marie Antoinette going back in time to stop the French Revolution with the power of Moe and checking her privilege. Now, Berserk okay. of Gluttony, here's something okay. unlike anything we've yeah. seen. No, no, no. I've been watching this joint. He's going to say, hold on, before he even says anything or whatnot, I've been watching Berserk of Gluttony or whatnot. I like that hope. So far, I've been liking it. I wanted to see what he got to say about it. The power of Moe and checking your privilege. Now, Berserk of Gluttony, here's something unlike anything we've seen all year. All right, get this. You have a fantasy protagonist, but he's cool because he wears a dark cloak with black hair. Except initially, he's super weak and bullied by some pink-haired bitch. But luckily, luckily, there's a prestigious knight with blonde hair that protects him for some reason, and her name is Roxy. But... But the real unique part is that he has a special skill that makes him overpowered even at level one called gluttony that allows him to absorb the stats of anyone he defeats and get this, he even befriends a talking sword and oh my god, he starts killing goblins. So I don't think there's another anime like this out there right now. Ragnar Crimson was an anime the manga readers were gassing up and with the 40 minute premiere, I was hoping for more than just- Okay, 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 okay. It is like a whole bunch of animes combined in one. But it goes hard. I'm sorry. I know my taste. And Berserker Gluttony is my taste. Like I just said, like I said at the beginning of this. Goblin Slayer. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I, I like, you can be simple. If he talks about it, I'll say like this. Uh, my life is a VR MMO uh, character or whatnot. I like that hoe. I like Earth. A uh, little journey or whatnot going on up in the hoe. I don't know. I got, I got simple taste, man. Simple, simple taste. This angry man who hates dragons, vows to kill dragons, and is also literally too angry to die. Maybe this one could fill up the space for Turn Your Brain Off Edgy Show of the season, but there is a lot, and I mean a lot, of edge going around this season, so you better be doing something special to be standing out. Oh, no, no, hold on. This is, uh... Uh, Kingdom of Ruin. Also goes hard. I know, I've been saying something going hard. There's been a lot of good fall anime. Finally, it's here. The crumbling. Guys, I gotta ask you something important because I'm just not sure about this, okay? Listen up. So we got a king announcing he's about to commit genocide. Mm -hmm. He kidnaps a woman, strips her naked in front of a cheering crowd, then proceeds to execute her in cold blood and parade her severed head around while the orphan kid she was taking care of screams, yeah. <laughs> Now, I just want to confirm, is he the bad guy? If you're looking for peak edge this yes. season, well, you found it. Yeah, is it. Yes, he is the bad guy. Or whatnot. If you... Ooh, ooh, I got so many things I'm gonna say. I wanna hear him talk. I wanna hear him talk. This show is the subtlety of a white van that says free candy driven by Jimmy Savile. But you know what? I'm just a sucker for worlds where magic and technology collide. Because when you have giant golems murking tanks, getting firebombed by F 35s, while the angriest man on earth shoots a comically large bullet into a skyscraper before summoning magic miniguns out of his ass, then I kind of don't give a damn. If this is edgy, then sign me the fuck up because I'm 33 and this is deep. Okay, before he gets to Maggie and Dolly. Okay. That show. It's like, okay. Humans. Like, witches have always helped out the humans. They've helped them live life. They've healed them. They've done all this prosperous stuff. And then humans finally get technology up to date. To where it's like, oh, we don't need the witches anymore. whatnot, Because our technology is so powerful now. And then these fools start knocking off the witches. Talk about, oh, we don't need y'all no more. So y'all start knocking them off? the fuck is that so yeah he's the bad guy because all of a sudden it's just oh we're too good for you so we might as well just kill you off why how about just be like oh we don't need you anymore so y'all can go live y'all lives over here or whatnot they even said in the story or whatnot god had made witches and humans he made the witches to help out the humans or whatnot so you know what i'm saying because the witches was able to use magic to do whatever or whatnot and the humans didn't have all that the humans were the weak ones and so here it is i'm I'm going to help y'all out, ball over the series, you know what I'm saying? Y'all keep growing, grow, prosper, or whatnot, ball over the series, live y'all good lives. And as soon as they got to a point where it's like, oh, we don't need y'all no more, we start killing you off? Fuck that. And then the the uh, and then the apprentice or whatnot, I can't remember his name off the top of my head. Like I said, I watched Super the anime. You know what I'm saying? You kill, you kill his, uh, you kill his master or whatnot, or his teacher, all for whatnot, in front of all these humans, pray their head around, all this here, and you lock this nigga up for 10 years? And you think he ain't gonna want his get back? Come on now. So, 
じゃあこれと同じものを2着ほどそんなスティーブ・ジョブズじゃあるまいし一人くん遠慮しないでそうよ毎日 I don't even know how to describe this one coming from the late mangaka of Sakamoto Desuka a pair of twins trick a wealthy family to adopting them not knowing that there are actually two of them and they use that to just completely fuck with their lives I can't tell if this is meant to be hilarious or terrifying this is like some dystopian it YouTuber is, prank yeah. where every prank is written like that potato chip scene in Death Note but hey I'm not going to be calling them out since it seems like calling out YouTubers in 2023 is like That's my fucking location. We've got a new racing anime about Formula 4, a thing I've just learned about. And I, 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 I kind of got into it. I watched like three or four episodes of Maki and Dali, and I thought it would be more serious. It's, it's a little too, I'm not going to say kiddish. All right. Let me back into it or whatnot. I had a freaking package in my door. Let's keep going or whatnot. Uh, overtake, MF Ghost. Thanks to animation. We've got a new racing anime about Formula 4. Like both thing of them. I've just learned. I didn't realize the MF Ghost was uh, basically like the new um, Initial D. If you've never watched Initial D, go watch that. Um, that whole there goes hard. It's, it's throwback anime or whatnot, but go watch that whole. That whole goes hard or whatnot. So I didn't know the MF Ghost was the same thing. You know what I'm It was like a new thing of that. And about thanks to anime. And I feel bad because Initial D is also back with a sequel reboot. And look, Overtake is coming from the director of Fate Zero, Recreators. It looks like it's got some genuine heart put into it. They even made the effort to make sure all the sponsors are 100% accurate to what you'd see in a race. But this is Eurobeat. Ooh, an anime about visual novels. This was alright actually. Think Shirobako mixed with new games set in the 90s when an illustrator gets sent back in time to the golden era of visual novels where every anime girl had those fucking bug eyes. This one was interesting even if you just want to see how much otaku culture has evolved from humble beginnings where Akihabara's electric town actually had electronics in it to whatever the hell is being made now. <laughs> Oh hey, Girlfriend Girlfriend has another season and they're adding two new girlfriends for him to share? What's next? Five girlfriends? Six what? girlfriends? Surely even in anime- well, well, technically it's it's a girlfriend and a half. Well, I can't even say the half or whatnot. It's like a new girlfriend and then one of his girlfriend's younger sister that he's like, oh, like- like, if I had a little sister, you would be my little sister. So it's like five, it's four girlfriends and a little sister. That's what it is right now. I mean, a harem can only get so big, right? No, oh, my headphones are dying. Oh, damn it. Oh, I hate it when it does that. Okay, they're not dead. They just charge so fully. It always does that. Yeah, a hundred girlfriends who really, 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 really love you or whatnot. I I, I I saw the premise of this. I have not watched it yet. It's going to be on my list. But Jesus Christ. Mother. Mother of God. They did it. The final boss of harem anime has arrived. While we're struggling to even get a single girlfriend, my boy's going for one, two, five, ten. A hundred girlfriends is the goal and the journey has just begun. This is the one piece of Riz, the Lord of the Rings of Degeneracy. It, it, this it, it isn't was... the story of a Giga Chad. This is the story of the Giga Chad of Giga Chads. For a harem series with a hundred girls, endless possibilities. Is there, okay, okay, hold on, let, let. For a fandom to choose from, he managed to convince the anime community, the anime community, the group of thirstiest motherfuckers to ever walk this earth, that there is no best girl, because every girl pales in comparison to the protagonist himself. That's right. This man single-handedly ended the waifu wars. He's too dangerous to be left alive. I'm gonna be real. Okay, before he, before he goes into um, our dating story, it's our dating story, my inexperienced self, your inexperienced self, experience of something like that anyways the what i saw from uh 100 girlfriends was that he he uh had like tried to like i ain't gonna say rizzo he tried to talk to 100 different girls and they all rejected him but come to find out like god had made a mistake and didn't mean for all these girls to reject him or whatnot so he reverses it and every girl that he's ever hollered at is in love with him now. I don't even know to tell you on that one. 
After that, I don't know what else romance anime can do to impress me. I mean, look at this. Our dating story? All right, we've got the popular girl. The loser nerd who's never had a girlfriend. Never seen that one before. Can't wait to watch for two seasons just to see them hold hands. <laughs> no way. We're 45 seconds in. Is this what I think it is? Virginity. The final boss of all gamers worldwide. Losing it has historically been one of gaming's toughest accomplishments, requiring the mastery of some of the hardest mechanics you can find in gaming, including downloading dating apps, touching grass, and even occasionally, talking to women. For decades, gamers have been trying to break the legendary record set by runner Alabama Slammer X69X, but today, we might have a new contender. This is one man's story to destroy. The losing virginity. Any percent speedrun. Ah, failed run, guys. Failed run. Go next. Hey guys, hope you enjoyed that video. Oh, Thank you very man. much this month too. Author Curtis X Team. Basil, dysfunctional degenerate. I Flabber did enjoy this video. Husbando, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Shout out to MS Patriot about that. I did enjoy this video. I ain't gonna hold you. I do feel like there is. There are a lot of guys or what that who are getting into these a lot of guys in these anime that are like the girl who be like, I like you, or I wanna do something with you, and it's like, oh, it's like like on uh on girlfriend girlfriend. The whole story of I wanna make y'all happy, but I don't wanna sleep with any of y'all because I don't wanna make anybody jealous. What's the purpose then, brother? What is the purpose then? I mean, I, I, I don't know or whatnot. I mean, shit, even with um, Rent a Girlfriend or whatnot, like, yeah, you're in love with this one girl, but as you can see behind me, he has a whole slew of other girls or whatnot that that he can just, you know, like, hey, come over, let's do this or whatnot. And I don't, I don't, I mean, he actually has a literal girlfriend or whatnot. And, and it just, it's still just, I, I don't know. I don't know. So I don't know. It's making it's making these weaves look kind of kind of kind of weak or whatnot. Dudes just chasing after this one girl. And I understand it's. You know what I'm saying you, you gotta fall in love with just one girl. It's understandable. But Jesus Christ, now come on. Just let's let's go ahead and either go ahead and, and get it in with somebody else or get it in with her and admit your feelings or whatnot. If she break your heart, you already got a backup plan. I don't know. Maybe that's why I'm single still. I, I don't get it. But anyways, there's been a lot of good anime out this year or whatnot. I mean, this year has been eating. Um, I mean, usually I, I feel like when it comes to the years of anime, like lately, they like, gonna say lately, but like earlier, it was like one or two good ones that you would you would find. And then now it just seemed like it's just been boom. A lot of these shows they're getting adaptated right or whatnot. A lot of these shows they're getting um like they're not just picking whatever manga and saying, alright, we're gonna make that show. It's like, how well did this manga do? Were people interested in it? Let's go ahead and go with it. And I think some even some of these mangas or whatnot are even better as anime or whatnot, because like you might get the senses of it with, while reading the manga, but like watching the anime is a whole different story or whatnot. So I don't know, man. Anyways, let me hear y'all thoughts and opinions down below. Or whatnot by looking at my, my hair at the end of this video it's time for me to redye my shit uh y'all let me know what color i should dye my hair next <laughs> but uh y'all also let me know what's y'all anime y'all been fucking with this year and all that right there all that good stuff uh this your boy philly flexer and uh we out